What makes human communication possible? One way of thinking about this question is to ask, why has video chat made the current COVID crisis so much more tolerable than it might have been? Can you imagine lockdown with only a telephone to connect you to the outside world? Sure, a phone can convey words, but it can't convey the nods as someone's getting what you're saying, or the puzzled frown that they show that they're not. It's easy to think of linguistic communication as just the exchange of words. But what these behaviors tell us is in fact, there's more to communication than that. Now, traditionally, a lot of scientific theories of communication have focused on words. But as examples of people, for instance, being able to understand what someone else is saying before they've actually finished a sentence show us, communication is a far more active and on involved process than that. Listeners are actively engaged in trying to figure out what speakers are saying. They're not just sitting around waiting for the words to arrive. So we gesture while we speak. And yes, words and gestures function as a single integrated communicative system. Although gestural behavior does not work as an autonomous uh, communicative channel, we can still find patterns in the way we move our body while we speak. We uh, perform recurrent gestures, for instance, feed gestures going along with speech rhythm. And we can find also patterns in the co-occurrence of words and gestures. So far, many quantitative studies have resorted to counting the overall amount of gestures that a single speaker makes. But not so many have tied these gestures to linguistic expressions. So this is what our study aims to do, to quantify the relationship, the pattern between gestures and specific linguistic expressions. Gestures are a core part in our daily communication. We are constantly using our hands to point, give directions or represent shapes, but we also use them when talking about more abstract concepts such as time. Over the last 30 years, researchers have studied the relation between speech and gesture when conveying temporal information. We know, for instance, that we tend to gesture to our left when talking about the past, while we gesture to our right when talking about the future. However, this is the very first time we are able to address this phenomenon through the use of big data, thanks to the television repository Newscape. This massive data set allows us to quantify how often a speaker performs a gesture when using a temporal expression, and most importantly, that these gestures are informative, efficient, and highly systematic. So what we have learned from this study of gesture frequency using a massive multimodal data set is, at the general level, that linguistic expressions are, can be systematically accompanied by patterns in gesture, and therefore interiorized, learned alongside multimodal information. At the level of uh, nuances of meaning within the same semantic domain, we have learned that different uh, gesture frequency rates can mark differences in meaning across, in, in this case, temporal expressions. And at the level of individual expressions, we have learned that the less predictable, the less frequent a, a phrase is in the language, the more likely it is to be accompanied by a meaningful gesture because gesture seems to be working with the other modalities to enhance the informativity of the message. So all this tells us that the relationships between modalities in communication uh, can be really intricate and that we need more large-scale quantitative studies using big uh, multimodal data sets like this one if we want to understand exactly how they interact with each other.